today will be sharing some stories with our experience in remote, uh, as remote workers, but we'll also uh, have some solutions to the problems that we've faced along the way. Uh, yeah, so that's who we are. Um, we are colleagues. Uh, only recently Stu joined our team, and I can't... Uh, I got him here, and he has been amazing. So six weeks ago, Stu joined. Uh, you can find us anywhere here online. Uh, you can also find us here. We're happy to talk about anything remote working or anything at all, really. Um, we are part of a slightly bigger team. Now, uh, you may have seen Noel just previously talk. Uh, there are a few of us around. We also sponsored some coffee today. We are 55 humans strong, uh, spread out all across the world. We are fully distributed, so everyone's in the same situation as myself and Stu. And we do enterprise WordPress um, as like our main product that we deliver to clients. There is a nice little uh, song that I love, um, which is on uh, business cards now, which is great. Uh, it's called Made by Humans and Powered by WordPress. So what is remote work? Sorry. So remote working <laughs> is often, uh, often conjures images of beaches, laptops, and cocktails. But for some, remote working can be as simple as swapping the office for a space at home. And uh, we'd like to share how we became re remote workers. Uh, so professionally, I was a freelancer uh, in WordPress for a couple of years. This was actually about four years ago uh, in Brisbane, surprisingly, um, or maybe a little earlier than 2014. Um, and I used to work for a couple of agencies in the city. Uh, they were design agencies, and they had a uh, need for a WordPress developer to come in-house and, and chill out with them for uh, projects. Um, about the same time, I actually took some time off in between a project to just sit on South Bank and ponder my life, uh, get a little bit meta, and take a step back and figure out which direction professionally I wanted to uh, pursue. My uh, freelancing projects were a little bit stagnant, um, but serendipitously, I actually heard Bronson Quick, who's around here somewhere, um, talk at a non-WordPress meetup, which, uh, if you know him, is pretty surprising. And it actually opened my eyes to uh, what WordPress can do uh, in the space, and the level at which um, he was doing WordPress at, uh, projects at was uh, pretty inspiring. I uh, knew pretty quickly this is uh, where I wanted to be, and I uh, got in touch with him and uh, Lockyer, um, and we shared an office for a little while until we became part of the Human Made family. It wasn't actually until a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Tom, one of the partners for Human Made, uh, where he said, hey, look, you know, uh, we're all remote here now. You can work from where you want. I thought, great. I'm going to work from my home office in uh, West End. And he quickly said, hey, don't you live in New Zealand? Aren't you a Kiwi? I thought, wow, OK, mind blowing, just a little. Um, so Hannah and I pretty much packed up. Five months later, we were back in New Zealand. Um, and it's been pretty good ever since. Uh, so even though that I now work at Human May, the story of what, uh, me working remotely started with uh, actually Ben, some of the guys up the back there. Uh, so in 2015, uh, while still working for a local agency, I attended my first work camp, which was uh, the 2015 work camp here in Brisbane. Uh, so after seeing some talks from the likes of uh, Peter uh, Wilson, Steve Peel, and Ryan McHugh, uh, I got inspired uh, and felt like uh, my current job really wasn't pushing me enough as a person as, and as a uh, WordPress developer. So I started looking uh, for work at companies that offer remote working, but also the ability to work with enterprise clients. <coughs> So fast forward to October of that same year, um, as I was about to leave for a month long trip to America, I received an email asking me if I'd like to go uh, have an interview at XWP. Uh, and after a few uh, video interviews from coffee shops uh, across America, I eventually was offered a job on my return to Australia. Uh, and then, as I say, the rest is history. <coughs> so Tare, why does it work for you? Uh, this is a map of most of uh, the world. I've uh, cropped a little bit of America out. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and this is actually the uh, patent. This is where all our humans work, um, as we refer to ourselves individually. Uh, there are 20. You might see in the middle there. There are 20-ish, 22 in the UK. That's where we uh, started. So that's why there's a lot of us there. There's a handful in Australia. Most of them are here in this room, which is great. Uh, but you'll notice um, there's one guy. That's me, uh, currently holding the fort in Auckland. Uh, so for me, remote working has to work because I'm the only one there and uh, it's the only way it's going to work when you're in New Zealand for the moment. If anyone's from New Zealand looking, come see me. Uh, but my time zone is pretty unique. Uh, we are plus 12, plus 13 GMT, so we're normally ahead of most of our clients, uh, all of them being based in the UK and or uh, the States. Uh, it's a different feeling uh, being in the future. It's um, always something that's uh, a little bit odd. Uh, so I will get up at about 
I don't know, 10 o'clock, and it's uh, your 8 o'clock, and we're all ready to go as a team. So I actually spend a lot of the time working with the Australian team here in uh, New Zealand. Uh, it also allows me a lot more of the freedom, as you might have uh, guessed, to pick my own working hours. So uh, depending on how the project is going, I can shuffle my workload around. Um, and that's why it works for me. Uh, I can, sorry, as well as uh, having the time and the space to work, I can choose a location. So if I didn't want to be in Auckland, I could uh, jump on a plane tomorrow, go and visit my brothers in Bali, uh, work from cafes there. I can also head over to Zurich and uh, work with a best friend from university. We get, um, anywhere there's a stable internet connection, really for remote workers is a, is a working office. However, uh, even though I work from home, where I try, uh, I try to keep uh, the traditional office amenities. So this is actually my water cooler in my backyard. Uh, I go here for all the daily gossip. It's pretty one-sided. And um, do some trouble, kind of troubleshooting conversations out here. It really is my backyard. Uh, I'm not really a kind of city, city folk, um, so I'm always close to nature. And this gives me the space I need to be productive and uh, nice and quiet. And uh, Stu, why would uh, remote working work for you? Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Uh, so, if you'd asked me that question a few months uh, after I started becoming a remote worker, my uh, actual answer would have been no. Uh, I actually found it really hard to, uh, to work remotely from home. Uh, I didn't have that same social interaction that you would have when you worked at an office. Uh, however, what did change my mind was the ability to work anywhere, anytime. Uh, so, um, in 2016, I was able to travel to Vienna and Austria for work in Europe. I met up with some of the crew from XVVP in real life. Uh, we spent the week uh, getting up to the conference, exploring Vienna, and even doing a bike wine tour. Uh, afterwards, I actually went off to uh, Latvia, and I um, can't keep remember where the other place was, but we, uh, <laughs> we actually uh, went uh, go-karting, um, and uh, it was a really good uh, team bonding experience. Uh, in that same year, I was able to go to WordCamp uh, US, uh, at the same time, we actually just got a new client, so we uh, tagged the conference on to the trip at the same time. Uh, so after the conference, uh, my team, my personal uh, team that I work with every single day, uh, would um, you know bond together outside of work, uh, and we even went to an ice hockey game. Uh, so that was quite a good experience. Uh, I'm completely blown away by what I have got to experience in the first year of working remotely. I can't wait to uh, see where it leads me. Uh, so, like every workplace, it's not without its challenges. This is number one, uh, distractions. So, uh, whenever I speak to my family and tell them what I do, they say, uh, hey, come on. I'd get too distracted if I could work from home. Uh, they're not wrong. You know, there's a PlayStation, Xbox, uh, there's probably too many gaming uh, peripheries at my house, a couch, a TV, Netflix, all of those things are steps away from my desk. The, um, the opportunity to be distracted is uh, everywhere. Um, it's very easy to ask yourself, how productive can you actually be if you're only three steps away from your bed and you're tired AF? Uh, my key to handling distractions, um, really to either let them happen and manage them, or to ignore them completely. Uh, I'll start a little later, as I've mentioned. I'll also uh, wake up earlier, so the flip of that, uh, and try and finish earlier. And this gives me a bit of time to go and do those household errands that I want to do, or just kind of break away. One thing that I really enjoy doing now uh, is trying to see a movie with uh, my, my partner's Nana. So she likes to go on Thursdays. It's cheaper for seniors. Um, and this can kind of lead to this idea of uh, choice paralysis. So when you can choose anything, anywhere, anytime, what do you choose? I still have no idea. Um, but for me, uh, being committed to a working, uh, sorry, working from home, uh, I had to set up an office with a nice desk, chairs, uh, enough sunshine hours and uh, sunlight to come inside. So, I mean, like, I've purchased three different chairs within the space of a week to try and get the perfect fit. Still looking for a perfect chair. Uh, you really need to set some constraints around uh, these decisions. This can be as easy as a, a time frame. I need something uh, set up in a week. Or a budget, which is uh, I don't actually have enough money for that perfect chair. <laughs> WordPress really has a uh, philosophy here, which is uh, decisions, not options. So that helps me. This is a huge one, so when you're remote uh, and virtually interacting with people, there is this idea of isolation and stress. Uh, we actually have very open com uh, communication about this uh, as, a, as a company. Um, 
it's, it's super normal. Like, uh, you, you, every time you're stressed, um, you can see people stressed in your, in your workspace. Uh, you can't see that all the time when you're a remote worker. So what you need to do is put your hand up, tell your colleagues how you feel. Uh, and it takes, it takes a lot to kind of get up and, and say that. But uh, we're really lucky we have these comms, and we have people that have done it before. Uh, the people who you work around can't really see if you're stressed or not, um, and some of that can be about isolation. You really, you just, so I, can't, I really can't say this enough, like you have to tell people how you feel. Um, and there's absolutely no shame in admitting that you're human. We all are. We just have to be a little bit more explicit about it as remote workers. Uh, you can trust me, or my, uh, trust me or yourself if you uh, are having these feelings of uh, isolation and stress in this environment. Just simply sharing it with another colleague is uh, enough most times to get that off your chest. And uh, I'm really like, happy to talk about this with anyone personally at the WordCamp. Uh, so come see me for a chat. So for me, uh, a challenge that I've had, and I know that a lot of people have um, had with working remotely, is uh, when you have a distributed team, you're working over multiple time zones. Uh, so, sure, uh, remote working allows you to work all times of day and night, but I'm the type of person that likes to start early, finish early. Uh, at my previous job, most of the team were in either uh, Eastern Europe or North America, so the overlap uh, of us working together was very minimal. Uh, however, I did make myself available for the early morning meetings. When I first started, uh, we had a weekly uh, backlog grooming session. That would happen at 2 o'clock in the morning. But thankfully, uh, after a a couple of weeks, my team leader decided that was a bit stupid for me to be up that late, and uh, I didn't have to do it anymore. Uh, so the next one is social uh, interaction. Um, not having the social interaction on a daily basis uh, with my team was hard. Uh, not being able to discuss certain issues with them, like debugging code, or even uh, how to approach certain tickets that we had open at the time. Uh, one thing we did implement was a weekly uh, team meeting where we would all attend the meeting and talk about uh, work stuff, but also uh, stuff outside of our, um, our work life. Uh, again, the biggest issue here was organizing the different time zones for when people could actually attend. Uh, and I, unfortunately, had to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to attend the meeting. Uh, so uh, switching off. Um, switching off was uh, probably one of the hardest things that I can actually do when I finish after the day. Um, a lot of people just say shut the door and finish the day, but unfortunately, as most of us who are remote workers, and even those of us that work in a typical office, it's pretty hard to uh, switch off. So uh, your laptop or phone might be the same one that you use for both work and personal stuff, uh, so this can be hard at times as uh, you might be checking emails late at night just because you're, I don't know, watching cat videos on YouTube. Um, so uh, one story that I actually do have to tell you um, about not being able to switch off. Uh, this is one that Sarah wanted me to tell everyone today, as I'm not really proud of it, and I really wish I didn't do this. Uh, so last year, uh, we bought tickets to see the Hillcroft Woods uh, at the Brisbane Entertainment Center. A few hours before the concert was about to begin, uh, the project I was working on, uh, a pretty big bug was uh, affecting our production environment. Uh, uh, and after spending a couple hours of trying to debug the issue, the guys in Europe, um, I, uh, I was, uh, you know, I closed my laptop and I went to uh, get ready for the concert. Because it's an hour and a half from, well, actually it's about two hours to the entertainment center from Toowoomba, uh, the whole entire way from Toowoomba to Brisbane and then even at the concert itself, I actually was on my phone trying to help you guys with that issue. Uh, Sarah was not happy about this, and actually during uh, the support act, I was still doing the <laughs> um, However, just, uh, I think it was like a couple of minutes before the Hilltop was were about to set into the stage, uh, we were able to actually fix and deploy the bug. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I was able to switch off and finally enjoy the concert uh, and have a semi-happy go. <laughs> So, um, however, because of this, I've had to actually limit the way I interact with uh, work on my phone. Currently don't receive any work email. However, I do have Slack enabled. Um, but I also have uh, the Do Not uh, Disturb feature on my phone set. So, late at night, I'm not receiving those um, notifications or if the, anything in production happens. Uh, but I actually have not been working up at the um, all times of the night. I've, I've got this set from uh, 7 p.m. until 7 a.m. daily, although I do get up early and ignore the do not disturb, so I've got to kind of work on that a 
<laughs> yeah, we, are, we all have our ways and our methods, and they're not all perfect um, with dealing with things like switching off. But there are some benefits. There really are. So if we haven't scared you already, um, there are a few to remote working. Biggest of which is you can work anywhere and at any time. So um, I guess that speaks for itself. But uh, me as a person, I know exactly when I'm the most productive. Uh, and it's a little bit arbitrary to be told that between 9 and 5, that's your productivity hours. So you get a bit more freedom to choose the hours you, you, um, you work in. Uh, the kind of the, the metric here shifts from how much time you spend in a physical space working to how much uh, measured output, sorry, to measuring the output that you've predefined um, with targets and goals. Those of you who have children will understand the idea of dropping them off at daycare or school is not flexible. Um, so you can work within them, and every remote worker has that flexibility to alter their timetables. Uh, for me, working remotely means working from home. It uh, won't always mean that, and it hasn't always. For others, it means places like beaches, cafes, different countries. I mean, we're uh, naturally curious and adventurous creatures, so as remote workers, we're allowed to, we're given the freedom to explore that. Equally important, and the name of this uh, kind of talk is there's no commute. Um, I really, I, I feel like it's self-explanatory, but um, in Auckland, and I heard in Logan it's a very similar situation, you can spend one to two hours just stuck in traffic each day, traveling to and from work. Uh, it seems like a bit of a waste, um, and also the cause of like road rage, stress. There are some people who can flip this and actually use the commute to help with switching off. Um, if anyone here does like the commute, please come and tell me. Um, I'd love to love the commute, but I don't. This idea of freedom is uh, pretty inherently uh, a part of being a remote worker. Sometimes just having the option to work anywhere at any time is enough. Uh, I know that Hannah and I could leave for the UK tomorrow if she felt like leaving. Um, and we could do that without too much interruption. Doesn't mean we're going to, just means we have the option. We live on the same property as Hernan. Um, that's how we go to movies and stuff on Thursdays. And it's really rewarding to just be available and uh, there for her. I have a uh, family who come and visit me during the day. Uh, I've had many cups of teas with uh, mum and a couple of brothers and sisters. And it's just nice to have that freedom to be the person you want to be and to be, you know, like, there for them. Uh, I didn't do the video, but some of you may remember this little interview here. Uh, this, this happens to me every now and then. So I have uh, some noise-canceling headphones. I also don't always look at the videos coming, um, like looking at me, so I don't look at myself in the video camera when we're doing voice calls. Um, and my nan actually snuck up, Hannah's nan snuck up behind me. Well, snuck up, she walked up. <laughs> she had a really good conversation, which I couldn't hear, because I had noise-canceling headphones. However, everybody else on the call could. Clients, <laughs> colleagues. So as soon as I found out, I quickly muted everything, turned around kind of interacted. I thought, oh, hey, look at this. You're here? She goes, well, why the hell have you been ignoring me these last two minutes? <laughs> so I have uh, definitely some feels for this guy. Um, but uh, Stuart's going to share some pro tips about uh, kind of handling these.
However, working from home, I had to kind of increase the mix. Uh, being that um, my social interactions with people would be limited to uh, my girlfriend, close friends, and family members, I didn't really get out of the house that often. Uh, and also, I found that I wasn't as physically active. Uh, I was pretty much limited to walking the 10 steps to my office from the bedroom, uh, and then 10 steps to the kitchen for lunch, and then back to the office again. So not very far. Uh, so now I go to the gym two days a week, uh, as well as continuing the boot camp and personal training sessions. Not only have I met some of the most amazing people in my life doing this, uh, I've also met uh, people that I've never dreamed of meeting, uh, kind of the same way with uh, my experience with WordPress. Uh, also, recently, I was able to run a, uh, a half marathon with the Gold Coast just recently. Um, uh, and I would highly recommend anyone here who is working remotely or considering uh, working remotely to actually get a hobby. Um, it doesn't have to be exercise. Uh, just as long as you get out of the house and meet new people. Try and not uh, have it um, to do with anything but that you do at your job. Uh, it's just good to get out of the house. And um, as much as we love WordPress, we do kind of need to switch off and. Uh, so I'm obviously completely different. Um, <laughs> my hobby is to get involved with the WordPress community. Um, this is almost a lie, right, Ralph? Like we're, we actually, uh, Ralph and I are kind of co-organizers for the WordPress Auckland meetup group. And, uh, you know, like being a remote worker and having the freedom to do uh, all, control your timetable and all of this kind of stuff is actually helped a lot for me. Uh, we're also encouraged by our company to kind of step up and help out with the community. Recently, WordPress Auckland has uh, celebrated our 16th month in a row of meetups, which is like, feels like maybe 20, 25. It, it, it takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot of time um, that you might normally spend somewhere else, so maybe with one of the hobbies or uh, a bit more work or, you know, like family. But it's super rewarding. Um, as someone, as a remote worker who's, you know, isolated, living next to the cows, these guys are quickly become my friends, guys and girls. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's really, it really is a rewarding challenge. <clears throat> we actually partner with a charity meetup as well, uh, and they deliver a lot of projects that are built on WordPress as well. We encourage a whole lot of interaction between the two meetups, and uh, the people you meet here are incredible. And everyone gets together to do a charity hackathon about three times a year. If I can say anything about getting involved in the local WordPress meetup or community, uh, it really is just do it. Uh, you're already here, so thank you. Um, it does help you grow as a person and a professional, and you just never know. The stories you share with others can be the start of their story. Many friendships and uh, a whole lot of awesome relationships. We all started somewhere, and we're all going somewhere, so why don't we go together? So if we actually haven't scared you by now, we're <laughs> near the end of our talk, uh, so if you want to learn how to become a remote worker, or maybe you need to change where you're currently remote, uh, who you are currently remote working for, uh, here's some tips. Uh, just basically uh, check out companies that support remote working, uh, human made, XWP, and automated. I know are always looking for new talent. Uh, check out the post status job boards uh, for a list of currently advertised jobs, uh, and as Sorry, I was saying, uh, networking at WordCamps, uh, WordPress meetups, uh, these type of things uh, will help you meet new people in the industry, and it may one day open the, job, uh, the door to a future job prospect. Yeah, basically, it's uh, share your story, share your tips, and generally get involved with the WordPress community. Uh, both of our journeys are in remote working, started with WordPress. Uh, they're not going to end with WordPress. And uh, hopefully your journey to throwing away the commute is uh, as awesome as ours. Thank you.
<laughs> when they come home for lunch, try and not be anywhere other than, other than uh, in front of your computer. Uh, uh, my, my door does not lock. And sometimes the handle falls off, so I am stuck in there. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of just ignore them. If they're, if you're getting accused for not working by your family, it's just, it's gonna happen. Um, uh, yeah, I gotcha. I'm a, I'm a little bit more flexible with that, so like if it's a planned thing, you know, I'll let everyone know that we're going for lunch. So you can kind of accommodate that interruption, but uh, most people that I know and are great friends with, they're all nine to five anyway, so the only time they're gonna interrupt me is after that. And that does happen, so you just cope as you can. It's pretty much the same for me as well. The only um, time that that changes is if we have uh, meetings that are outside of those time, time zones. Um, so we'll kind of just shift. So if you're gonna do a late night, uh, feel free to grab a late start later in the week. Um, so pretty, pretty similar to what everyone else does really. Got anything, no? <laughs> um, what's that? Portable USB screens is an option. Oh, okay. There's one right there you can look at as well. Cool. You could also take a HDMI cable with you and maybe hook into a TV of where you're staying at. They might find it a bit weird if the TV is moved to the desk. <laughs> nice. Uh, our one, like our personal, uh, the human-made one or the wider? Uh, for developers uh, in that kind of space, we uh, in Auckland try to adopt them into like our WordPress community. Uh, because that's kind of the, the safe space for everyone to be in, especially if it's a lone developer. Ralph and I actually um, offer office space to like devs over in, um, in Auckland if they need a break, come and just chill. Uh, we know that struggle about just being isolated, so being in a cafe or office really helps. Um, but in terms of adopting people, it's, uh, it's not something that we've actively pursued. Um, but, uh, you know, let's have a yarn about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be freaking out a little bit, um, but it should be, uh, at the moment I should probably just going to say, uh, I don't know, nothing fascinating. <laughs> it is already. Absolutely. When I first started, that's exactly what I did. I would actually uh, have a shower, um, do everything that I used to do uh, when I used to go to an office, if I get in the car. Um, I would just uh, make sure that I'm ready and, and it would feel like I'm actually going somewhere. Um, but yeah, it, or, er, a lot of people do struggle with it and they just have to get into the mindset of it is exactly like going to the office. Thank you. 
all four of them have Skype on all day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> living room while they're working, but, um, but they're really making it work for them and the editors aren't that new. Hey, what are you doing? You know, the board or I want to rub it up something with you or any of that kind of stuff. And so just finding people that you connect with is thing. And if you Google Jam Pants on YouTube, you can actually see them when they've got their moves out for a bit of a dance break. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be really thrilled that I told you all yeah, about that. That is pretty funny. Um, the other thing that you can do with the uh, WordPress Australia Slack bot is if you are going to Sydney or Melbourne or even Brisbane, uh, you can like put it in there, say that you're going to work from the State Library or a cafe, and nine times out of ten, there'll be other people that will want to join you. So yeah. don't feel that you're uh, disconnected if you don't have um, people around you. Cool. Do we have one more? Yeah, one more, one. and then we'll break lunch. Right up. <laughs> working the way as if I was walk to work instead of just sticking to a group closing the door. But it, it was managing expectations, even though it's my little one, yep. that this is now work. Now, I've just graduated to from the home office to the back of my chair. Um, <laughs> Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Cool. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys.